Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Summer Burton and I'm here on behalf of Literacy Link South Central. Today we're going to be talking about apprenticeship, specifically building the capacity of service providers to support their clients when working in the skilled trades is one of their goals. If you work in employment services, adult literacy, continuing education or social services, we think you'll find this presentation particularly useful. It will lay the groundwork for not only your own client support, but for next steps in the larger apprenticeship journey that your client may be embarking on. Literacy Link South Central is the regional support network for adult literacy programming throughout a six county area in southern Ontario, including Brant, Haldeman, Norfolk, Oxford, Elgin and Middlesex. In our role as a support network, we do a lot of work with local programs, identifying needs, developing training aids and professional development material, doing presentations and spreading awareness around the important role literacy plays in people's success. So why are we specifically talking about apprenticeship? First, because the adult literacy programs we support work with people that have, or could have, apprenticeship as a goal. In fact, it's one of the five recognized goal paths in the Literacy and Basic Skills, or LBS, program. And adult literacy programs offer specific activities and lessons based on real life apprenticeship tasks as a result. Also, because adult literacy programs can and do share clients with employment agencies, many clients who are working with employment counselors to develop the skills they need to uh, prepare for employment are also working on developing their essential math, reading, writing, interpersonal, and digital skills in LBS. This offers an excellent opportunity for coordinated support that moves clients even more quickly towards their goals. And finally, Literacy Link South Central has a history of conducting activity in the area of apprenticeship, doing projects, developing resources, and hosting community conversations. This is a continuation of that important work, work that's becoming more and more critical as we face an impending shortage of skilled tradespeople across Ontario. We're pleased to be bringing you today's presentation as the first in a three-part series about apprenticeship. If you're watching this presentation now and would like more information about Literacy Link South Central or this series, please visit us online at www.llsc.on.ca. There you'll find three helpful resources. Links to this and other recordings in the series, PDF copies of these slides, and a transcript of each presentation. We'd like to thank the Ministry of Training, Colleges and Universities for providing the funding for this series of presentations. For several years now, we've heard people talk about the pending skilled trades shortage I mentioned earlier. And frankly, the shortage is no longer pending. It's here. In fact, the Ontario government stated that one in five new jobs are expected to be within the skilled trades. As an industry that helps people find and keep work, that's important information for all of us to have and to act on. Yet apprenticeship seems to be an area that people seeking employment and the people that help them are sometimes confused about. We believe that we could all do more to help build our capacity to move people towards reaching an apprenticeship goal. Recently, Literacy Link South Central completed a three year apprenticeship related project. One of the recurring lessons learned during the project was that service providers need to continue to build their knowledge of the intricacies of the apprenticeship system. One of the project leads reflected that as the project progressed, he became more effective and efficient in helping his apprenticeship bound clients. Skill development, he said, was directly related to his increased knowledge of programs, services and supports that someone can access in pursuit of their career goals. Throughout the project, he learned more about apprenticeship and different ways to navigate existing systems. He said, I learned a lot about apprenticeship and I already thought I knew a lot. I was the go-to person within my organization for matters related to apprenticeship, but I didn't know what I didn't know. In learning more about apprenticeship, he also learned how to frame conversations related to apprenticeship how to talk to clients about apprenticeship in a way that made it sound more achievable and within the client's reach. 
what if everyone who was in the employment industry had the capacity to talk about apprenticeships this confidently? Would we see a more unemployed people realizing that apprenticeship would be a good opportunity and a good fit? We think so. Would we see more people successfully completing their apprenticeship? Again, we think the chances are good. As it stands now, many community organizations have someone who is designated as an expert related to the apprenticeship field. But, as you heard, that individual may not know what they don't know. Some agencies may not feel like they need more information about apprenticeship because they have no direct stake in the apprenticeship system. They don't have to assist a certain number of clients in finding an employer to mentor them each year. There are no targets. In fact, no single agency within employment services or literacy and basic skills is specifically contracted to work with, guide, and support a potential apprentice. We rely on people coming to our program with this goal already in mind. If we want to be more proactive in moving people towards careers in the skilled trades, we need to build our collective capacity to talk about apprenticeship to clients who may or may not know this could be their path. Through today's conversation, we'll outline some of the basics and let you know where you can continue learning. As we said, today we want to provide service providers with a basic understanding of apprenticeship, especially as it relates to helping their clients. There are several moving and changing pieces within the apprenticeship system, and some information can and will change in the months ahead. We will not be digging into those changes, nor will we be talking about the details of various financial incentives that are available for apprentices and employers, and how to access them. We believe that one way to attract more people to this trade is to have more people talking about the trades. It might surprise some of you to hear that there are over 150 trades to choose from, separated into four sectors, mode of power, service, construction, and industrial. The people you work with might not even know that they're interested in a career that can be supported through the apprenticeship system. Now, it's not necessary to commit the entire list of 150 plus recognized trades to memory, but it is a good idea to ask yourself, I wonder if this could be an apprenticeable trade. You might already know that plumbers, electricians, and auto mechanics go through an apprenticeship, but what about a residential painter, meat cutter, or arborist? There are some really fascinating trades recognized in Ontario, and we encourage you to review them using some of the resources we're going to share with you in a moment. In an ideal world, rather than waiting for clients or learners to express an interest in becoming an apprentice, a service provider in literacy, employment, or elsewhere would be knowledgeable enough to identify when training for a career goal is achievable through the apprenticeship system, and comfortable enough to suggest that path to a client. Another key thing service providers need to know is that there are currently two types of apprenticeships, voluntary and compulsory, and they're just as they sound. Voluntary means that someone can train as an apprentice to work in a specific trade, but they can also work in that trade without having been an apprentice, getting their training informally or through school. Of course, going the apprenticeship route means that the school portion of their training is largely paid for by the government, and they're also paid for their on-the-job training. Those who choose to complete apprenticeship training in a voluntary trade also get access to provincial and federal financial incentives and earn recognized certification in their chosen career, which often makes them more competitive in the labor market. This can be especially true in Red Seal trades, where the certification is recognized across Canada. However, it's up to the person choosing to learn these trades whether or not they want to pursue an apprenticeship. It's voluntary. A compulsory trade means the person has no choice. To follow their chosen career path, they must train as an apprentice and become certified, or they will not legally be able to work in the trade. It's important to note that as a result of the modernization of the apprenticeship system, the classification of trades as voluntary and compulsory will change over time. Be sure to follow updates on the Ontario Apprenticeship website using the link on your screen to keep up to date on changes as they occur. 
There are several great resources and easy to follow websites where you can quickly determine if a client's employment goal is one they can achieve through an apprenticeship and whether the trade is voluntary or compulsory. The Apprenticeship in Ontario poster by OYAP is a great example of a quick reference list that highlights each of the skilled trades. They're color coded by sector and have symbols next to each identifying whether the trade is voluntary or compulsory. The Ontario College of Trades also offers a comprehensive list of trades, along with PDFs that describe exactly what type of work these tradespeople do, what is taught during the in-school portion of their training, the specific number of hours apprentices will need to spend both on the job and in the classroom, and a lot more. Compulsory trades are marked on this website as well. At its very foundation, the apprenticeship program is based on a learn while you earn concept. Unlike some other post-secondary opportunities, the workplace is where much of the learning happens. As an employee, the apprentice is paid to be on the worksite, contributing to the workplace while learning from experts in the field. While there are several ways to enter and move through the apprenticeship system, the graphic on your screen is a representation of each of the elements at play. We've chosen a honeycomb shape on purpose because for many people there isn't a clear start and a clear finish. That said, the process generally begins with a connection between a potential apprentice and a qualified employer willing to become a mentor. This is often when those of us working in employment services play a role. In Ontario, the relationship between the employer and apprentice is formalized by the Ministry of Training, Colleges and Universities through a contract called the Training Agreement. The agreement outlines the shared responsibilities and expectations for all parties involved, especially as it relates to on-the-job training. In the workplace, the employer is responsible for training the apprentice on the knowledge and skills required to be successful in their trade. Both the apprentice and employer sponsor use the Apprenticeship Training Standards logbook to track what skills should be trained and sign each section of the book as it's completed. Although the in-school component of apprenticeship training differs between the trades, it is a requirement to complete an apprenticeship. This college-level in-school component can come as a surprise to some people who are drawn into the skilled trades because they excel with working with their hands, but are not as strong at classroom learning, writing, or test taking. This is an excellent opportunity for Ontario's literacy and basic skills programs to support apprentices on their journey. The in-school portion of an apprentice's training is scheduled by MTCU at an authorized training delivery agent, often on Ontario College. The training may happen one day a week for several months, which is called day release, and allows the apprentice to work while they attend school. Or it may be several straight weeks of training in a row called block release training, which requires the apprentice leave work temporarily. At the end of this process, the fully trained tradesperson earns their certificate of apprenticeship. Additional levels of certification are available in some trades, including a Certificate of Qualification, sometimes called a C of Q, and Red Seal Certification. There are exams involved in most of these certifications, but successfully earning them will give the apprentice more job opportunities, a higher pay level, and greater responsibilities. As we know, certification in any career choice takes a commitment of time. Depending on the trade and personal circumstances, successfully completing an apprenticeship can take from three to five years or more. The difference with an apprenticeship, like we said, is that it's an earn while you learn opportunity. The biggest investment the apprentice makes is their time, and the return on investment is great because being certified in the skilled trades can open new doors to sustainable and lucrative employment. The Government of Ontario site is a fabulous resource for employers, potential apprentices, and service providers to learn about the benefits of hiring an apprentice, how to get a job in the skilled trades, and apply for grants and incentives. Those funding incentives are available to both entice employers to sponsor an apprentice and offset some of the apprentice's financial needs as well. 
the funding available and the process to access it can and does change. The provincial government has been clear that there are even more changes coming in the near future. So instead of us going into detail about financial incentives here, it's best to bookmark this go-to site to keep current on information as it changes. If you work with clients who have learning challenges, there may be some additional supports available to help them along their journey. For example, depending on the circumstances, accommodations can be offered for apprenticeship exams like the C of Q. The client might be able to take extra time to write the exam, write it in a separate room to reduce distractions, or use an interpreter or reader during the exam. In some select cases, the client can do a practical exam instead of a written one to demonstrate their knowledge and skills to an examiner. This request needs to be made to the Ministry of Training Colleges and Universities before the exam is booked. Medical notes or other supporting documentation may be required to support the request. Whether your client needs accommodations or not, they'll need to give some serious thought about preparing for apprenticeship exams. The College of Trades Exam Preparation Guide offers excellent advice on how to prepare for apprenticeship testing including how to access exam preparation classes offered by training delivery agencies. Often, when service providers speak about the path to a successful apprenticeship, it's described as a simple and linear process. For example, first you find an employer, then you sign a contract with the ministry, then you have your on-the-job and in-school training, and then you write an exam. But as we said earlier, in many cases, apprenticeship is not a linear path. In fact, the apprenticeship system has several key points of entry. Some people may come to you looking for work in an apprenticeable trade, needing to find an employer to hire them. Others may already be working, and it's the employer that's suggesting they'd like to register them as an apprentice. Some may have participated in a high school apprenticeship program through OYAP, and are seeking help with their next steps now that they've graduated. Others may have left high school before graduating and won't have the level of education required for their chosen trade. Some may enter the system through one of the government's free pre-apprenticeship training programs and have several required skills already under their belt. Others may have a high school diploma but lack the skills and habits that are required by an employer while others won't have the literacy skills needed to successfully complete their in-school training at all. Frontline service providers know that people come to us packaged with varying skills, goals, successes, and challenges. A strong circle of support is essential for clients entering the skilled trades, including yourself and those at other agencies in your community. Literacy upgrading, employment readiness programs, adult education, pre-apprenticeship, employment services, and ongoing skills assessments can each play a role in a client's successful apprenticeship journey. Do you know what local programs can help clients to build this foundation? If you're not a partner in Employment Ontario, we'd like to let you know that Employment Ontario has a variety of free services to help with employment readiness and skills upgrading. Employment services can help an individual clarify their apprenticeship goal, find an employer, and access financial support provided to apprentices. You can search for the employment service near you by going to the Find Employment and Training in Ontario website shown here. To find the free Employment Ontario literacy programs near you, contact your local literacy support network, which can be found on the Learning Networks of Ontario website shown on your screen. Our growing need for people to become involved in the trades will impact our work as service providers, especially those of us working in employment and training. It's time for all of us to learn more about apprenticeship, to prepare ourselves to help those who could benefit from pursuing training in the career of their choice through this hands-on, skills-based training opportunity. We hope that this presentation has made you feel more comfortable with how apprenticeship fits for the people you work with. If we each know the basics, what career choice could be an apprenticeship, what's involved in apprenticeship, and what other services and supports are available to help clients take the next steps, then we can successfully engage more people in the trades and support them as they become the skilled tradespeople of tomorrow. 
So don't keep your new knowledge a secret. Help build your agency's capacity. Make apprenticeship a standing agenda item at staff meetings, where you collectively commit to learn something new each time you meet. Seek out free video presentations like this one and share the link amongst your professional peers. Join a local apprenticeship network or skilled trades related committee in your area. Commit to building, brick by brick, your understanding of apprenticeship. And remember, if a question comes up, your local Employment Ontario Apprenticeship Office is just a Google search away. Next in the A Word series of, of presentations is what clients need to know, where we'll explore what your apprenticeship bound clients need to understand about the system and its supports. You can find that presentation and many other helpful documents in the resources section of our website at www.llsc.on.ca. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions about this presentation or any of our other work, please don't hesitate to contact us using the information shown on your screen.